So, the first thing I want to do for the totally uninitiated amongst you is to try and give you an idea of what the nodal interface really is. And I'm going to start here in After Effects, oddly enough. Of course, when it comes to surfacing, which is one of the areas that nodal works in Lightwave, we are used to having layers, good old layered surfacing, just like in Photoshop or here like in After Effects. Now one thing that you see in After Effects that you don't really see in Photoshop and you certainly don't see in the layered surface editor in Lightwave is the idea of pre-composition. You'll see that one of my layers here is pre-comp1, which I have here. So I have a little stack of layers in one composition and that stack of layers becomes a single layer in another composition which itself has a whole stack of layers. Now you may wonder what that's got to do with nodal, but think about it like this. Imagine that these here, you know, are our individual compositions, yep, or our individual surfaces, whatever, stacks of layers. What you see with pre-composition, like we have in After Effects, is of course that these stacks of layers can be inserted into a new layer in another stack. And again, here. This can be inserted into a layer somewhere. When you picture it like this, it kind of starts to look a bit like nodal. So, even at the most basic use of a nodal interface, there really is something incredibly useful for everyone and incredibly easy to understand for everyone. Because you can wind up taking lots of different things, pre-composing them, and then mixing them back together in other compositions or in other layers so to speak. The result of which of course then becomes our final output. Here's another way of thinking about nodes and that's to realize that in a fashion you've already been working with them for years. You just haven't really noticed it because they're not presented that way. Take something like this, a bone that you know deforms an object. This bone of course if we bring up its properties has certain things associated with it, certain properties its name, the type of bone it is, its rest length, the weight map that you assign to it, all of these different options. Of course it also has other inputs like the coordinates that you have here either for rotation or for position or scale or whatever else. And the bone of course has an output which is its effect that occurs on the mesh. You could say that the mesh or the vertices of the mesh have an input and the bone's output connect into those. And so perhaps you can imagine a node like this, a bone node. And it of course has inputs for rest length, weight map, strength, position, rotation, scale, and so on. So you could have here a node which would be, in lightwave terms, a scalar node, which is maybe 100% connected into strength. Other value inputs going to these inputs. And of course the bone itself delivers an output, which in the case of a bone would be a deform, and that would hook over to a mesh node to its input deform, you see? And when you look at nodes in this fashion, you realize that all that nodal is, is a type of interface. What's actually going on is no different to the kind of panels and value inputs that you have used for years. The only difference is the interface in which they're presented. You see, for instance, here with my bone again, we've got the bone's own properties, but we've also got its motion options panel, which has a whole bunch of different stuff. The panel layout is slightly different, and so on. With nodes, you have a single standardized interface that takes care of all of these things. And this one same looking interface can be used for motions, it can be used for displacements, it can be used for surfacing, for lighting, and so on and so forth. What this gives is much more flexibility in how you construct your scenes. And also there are certain attributes that might be associated with certain things, like for instance here, the bone deform. Here you have no kind of way of accessing that, or rather you access that by having the bone be a child of the mesh that it is deforming. 
or you have it on the mesh's input for which mesh item contains the bones that are being used. Now, no bone node like this does exist in Lightwave. This is just a example of thinking about the interface. The point, though, is that you get this standardized interface across the board for all these different areas, and you also get access to certain types of inputs or even outputs of things which you ordinarily would not have access to just in the standard panel interface. So basically, this is what people are talking about when they bring up the power of the nodal editor. It's the fact that the things in your scene get broken down into all these little component parts that can be looked at, referenced, altered, transformed, and also everything's inputs can be broken down into components married with the fact that you have this singular interface for motion control as well as texturing and so on, meaning that techniques and networks that you make can be mixed and used between different areas of your scene and models and whatnot. What all of these different little pieces of data represent, all these different infos and whatever else that you can grab from places, is of course the understructure of the 3D scene as a whole. These are the bits that it is built of, and that's what the node editor is giving you access to. All of the finer little detail that's normally taken off with code, when a pre-prepared tool like an IK solver or whatnot is set up for you. All of the little details and lookups that define how the IK solver work have been put together using code, and you're just left with this very basic interface. And so the node editor starts to get you down to the code level almost but presented in a point-and-click manner. So you don't have to worry about notation and syntax and so on and so forth. You just have to make sure you're plugging the right kind of data to the right kind of input. For instance, let's take a little look at this network here. I like this little guy. I think this is a, a good demonstration of what the node editor gives as well as where its sort of boundaries lie, if you will. This is a nodal build of Euclid's algorithm for finding the greatest common divisor between two numbers. Okay, take two numbers, A and B, and this little decision tree, this program, this algorithm, will mess around with them until it has found the largest possible number that both can be divided by and still produce a whole number. The greatest common divisor. It's pretty simple. Like a flowchart, follow it yourself, and it all works out great. So here, using mostly logic nodes, I've built the network in Nodal. Essentially, it's a little program. And we'll see if I connect up my final outputs here to this little spy. I'm currently getting the results 12 and 0. My inputs were 24 and 36. The largest number both can be divided by is 12. And so this wonderful little decision network has figured that out for me. Of course, you can be doubly sure that it works as it should, because if I make another iteration of the whole thing here, then of course we still get the same result out, so it'll keep churning over the numbers that it's come over and won't continue onwards to somehow mess things up. But what this shows is of course the difference between a node editor and actually programming stuff, the most obvious of which is I've had to make each of these iterations. The tree is just these five simple nodes, that's all there is to it. The problem is, you can't feed nodes back. You can cross-reference and feed nodes in any part of one network to any part of any other network as much as you want, but there's no way to iterate certain procedures or groups of procedures. The basic point is that the node editor is kind of a halfway interface between coding and between a normal panel, drop-down, menu, typed entry type of interface. It's a middle ground between the two. And as such, the way that you find yourself using it will tend probably more towards which way you yourself are acquainted with, because the node editor really does allow you to approach it in either way, which is why it's good both for more technical people and for artists. They can both get something out of it, as well as start to grab pieces and chunks from the others work and products and share and mix it all up. So, I hope that explains the basic concept behind the node editor, how it works, what it's for, 
and how it relates to things that users will already be familiar with. 